And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Atlas Duel for Divinity. When I was at Gen Con, I was walking by and this game just, I, I look, stopped and looked at it because it was so fascinating. It had these rubbery um, plastic guys and they looked cool and it had a board. And when I heard about the theme of the game in which you get to build your own creatures to attack your opponent, what a great idea! I played a, way back when um, RPS, uh, I'm sorry, real-time strategy games first came out. There was one, I can't remember what it was, where you created your own animals. Uh, you were able to evolve your animals and maybe I had a, a creature that had wings and it had alligators and uh, snapping teeth. And But uh, I love that. I love the idea. And that's such a cool idea. I hope the game is as cool as that. I hope, I hope, I hope. <laughs> The first thing a player is going to do at the beginning of the game is they're going to create three alpha creatures. You're going to pick three creatures and you have a whole deck of cards to go with. There's four types of cards. Each of your creatures is going to use one genus card and then you can add as many other cards to it. Now when you add cards to it, it's going to increase the total summoning cost of that creature. So the Shadow Ranger currently has a cost of 10. He has an attack of he gets plus one to range. He has five magic points, so if I want to put magic spells on this creature, I, ha I can put five of them, and he has ten life, as opposed to this undead horde, who has a special action here. Um, doesn't, And also, you notice that they each have two hands, and that matters later. He has ten hit points. And so there's all different types that you'll pick for your beginning. This guy here, this savage warrior, has twelve, and he does an extra damage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. This Celestial Knight here also has 12 and has 2 automatic defense. This guy has only 8 hit points, but he can fly automatically. This guy is a Spellbinder, starts with 50 spell points. And so once you pick that, the genus of each of your 3 alpha units, that's when you start adding other things to them. So, for example, um, there's all different kinds of weapons you can add. I might want to give my guy an obsidian sword that's going to cause, add three to the cost, but allows me to attack with it. It will do three damage and has a range of one. Or maybe I want to pay seven to get this Karus blade, uh, which does quite a bit. And in fact, there's more than one of the Karus blades and many of the things in your deck so that you can put them on two different alpha creatures. I might want to give him a ranged attack with his crossbow or a telekinetic sphere. And there's really all sorts of things. There's even things that are possible uh, things you can attack with like these mining tools, but also you can mess with the terrain on the board. And there's some obsidian breastplate and full plate armor and maybe just a magical robe. And so you have to kind of pick what weapons you're going to put. There's all sorts of weapons. There's upgrades to weapons. However, each weapon, many of the weapons and shields, if you notice this one has a little red hand on it, that takes up one of your hands. If you, you only have two hands to work with. So if you pick a weapon, uh, like for example, this ax here that uses both hands, I won't also be able to put that shield. Uh, and then, man, look at this. This is really cool, look at that. Rekia's battle suit. You can also add other features to your thing. You might want to add wings. That costs nine to add wings to one of your people. Or just battle frenzy, which gives this guy plus two and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Or explosive genes, which means they can blow up when they lose. Or an extra hand. This gives you another hand. So now you can put three hands worth of stuff on that guy. Or Supernatural Vigor gives you more hit points. Or Marksmanship, which gives you an extra one to your range. Or Regeneration, which gives you life back. And then finally, there's also Magical Spells. You have to have enough magic points to take these, but these are different cards that you can use and Healing Hands and just do different spells. Earthquake, Fire Strike, Magic Bolt. So at the beginning of the game, players are going to make three of these creatures and keep them secret from their opponent. 
that's not the only thing you're going to be doing. You're going to be picking some cards, like spell cards, essentially, uh, from a deck, and you're going to be choosing some of these that you'll be playing over the course of the game, like maybe a lightning strike or raise earth, and you're going to put these in a pile in front of you, the ones that you pick, and you're going to play them in the order that you put them down. So you're going to have to keep track of that. So once the players have their units and their, their overarching spells here ready to go, the game begins. This is the board that players are fighting over. There's some relics here on the board, and you're going to win if one of your units has two of those relics. Now, players, there's other tokens over here near the side of the board that players will be using, and they're also going to keep track of their summoning points over the course of the game. You have to decide at the beginning what's your maximum number of summoning points that you can have on the board. So uh, they recommend that you start with 250, but you can go all the way up to 500. And every time you summon a creature, it's going to cost you points. When you summon a creature on your turn, the first thing you'll do is you'll show the creature to your opponent so they can make sure that you've built it legally and also so they know what it does. So let's say here, for example, I show them that I have a Forsaken Drake, this guy who can fly, who's wearing a battle suit. He also has these throwing axes here, and he's going to put Paralyzing Venom on them, and I gave him Marksmanship. So I add up the points of that, and we can see that that's uh, 22, 25, 31 points. Now I'll put that in front of me, and I'll put the fact that it costs 31 points on it here in numbers so that we can remember that. And every time I summon it, I'll spend 31 summoning points. When I summon it, I'm going to pick one of the four creatures here next to the board. Each player has four creatures. Now, you're never going to get one, I think, that looks exactly the way you want, although here I picked the dragon, so that's a pretty obvious pick for me. But you can pick any of them. You put one on there so you remember which figures on the board are that, and then you summon one on your side of the board. Each turn, then, each of your people is going to be able to move one and do one of their actions. And you can summon another one of these dragons, I guess, in my next turn. Or maybe I would bring in a completely different sort of creature. Like, for example, possibly here, I have a Celestial Knight, who I've given full plate armor to, and I've also given him this magic staff, which gives him 10 spell points, and I use that to give him Summon Artifact and Earthquake. And so his total cost is 27. So I pick a Celestial Knight, of my remaining three, well, uh, this guy has a magic staff, so I'll use him. And I could put him on the board. Other than that, the game is fairly simple. Whenever you attack someone, you have to see if they're within range. You're going to look at the amount of attack that you do, subtract their defense from it, if they have any, and do that much damage to them. Now, damage is done oddly in this game. At the beginning you'll see how much hit points your people have. So I look here at my Forsaken Drake and he has eight hit points. So I'm going to put eight hit points here on his alpha card here. And then I look at my knight and my knight has 12. So I put 12 on him. Whenever they take damage, anybody takes damage, I remove it from this card. Even if I have two of these drakes on the board, and they both take damage, it comes from this card. You have like a collective pool. And when that's taken out, you're going to have to remove one of them from the board. There's other things, terrain, you can drown in water terrain, you can raise terrain, you get advantages from when attacking from terrain. Um, there's a whole fact about how the different cards, there's those other cards that you can play, summon them for different points and attack and with magic and stuff. And again, the first person to get both artifacts, to pick them up well, with one character, two artifacts out of the three, is the winner of the game. The first ten minutes of this game are some of the most fun I've ever had. To sit there and go through a whole deck of cards, each player has an identical deck of cards, and there's so many options, so much stuff, and you're sitting there going, oh, I would love to do this, and I would love to do that, and I'll pick this and get this guy, and then you're, you sit there and like, yeah, look at these guys I have, that's pretty cool. But the game itself isn't very interesting. The board is big, and most of you guys can move one, maybe two. So there's this slow trudge towards other people, then you hit that, boom, deterministic combat that comes from a pool of resources. And it's just, it's so slow. And you're summoning these guys. This concept is such a great one, and it's so cool that the, the game itself doesn't match up. 
if they'd give them better powers and, and maybe throw some dice in, you say, Vassal, not every game needs dice. Yeah, but this one kind of does. This whole idea of building a character up and going after things, and it's like chess. But in chess, the pieces can move across the board and jump. And, you know, chess has some pretty fast, cool pieces. And this does not have the feeling of chess. This has the, oh, can I see what 18 cards you picked again? Okay, you can move there and you'll hit me for four and I'll do that. Oh, man, it was boring and it was dull and I did not like it at all. The pieces are great. The idea is fantastic. The art is good. The building part is so fun. It's this wonderful build up. And then the game doesn't fulfill. Man, 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 man. Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish. I really wanted to like this game, folks. And I was like, all right, all right, all right, come on, let's, let's keep playing and let's play again. We must, we must have missed something. Let's try, now that we've played the game, let's build characters differently. And it just didn't work. Sure, flying helps. You can fly over train and maybe moving an extra space and range is much better in this game than melee. But that whole pooled resource is weird, for one thing. Hey, that guy's bleeding to death. Oh, yeah, let's get him. Oh, I'm going to kill this guy over here who's just as strong as he is. One hit, he's down. That's just odd. So, no, I don't recommend this, unfortunately. The rule book was clear. The, everything is good, except the actual gameplay, which is boring, which is a cardinal sin for me. Athlas, oh, how the mighty have fallen. I wanted to see such a cool game, and it just wasn't there. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. So just remember, you'd be shut in the door.